Hey, what's going on you guys? Welcome back to another episode with the iTrack. Big shout out to all the iTrack fam, man. We just hit 30k subs. I appreciate every single one of you guys for all that support, man. I really appreciate that. And let me give a huge shout out to Marie Allen and Jesse Allen. I appreciate you guys for, for grabbing badges. That's the, that's the motivation. If you haven't been here before, what we like to do is take a look at the most interesting and creepy TikToks and kind of evaluate for ourselves whether these are facts or fake. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button so we can get this video and this channel deeper in the algorithm so more people will have the chance to evaluate for this for themselves as well. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. The dog begins to bark as something spooks him. Suddenly, a strange set of disembodied legs runs across the background. The dog appears to be surprised by the sighting and heads inside. Looking more closely, the legs appear small and run at speed. Thank God for camera footage, because nobody would believe you if you said you saw a set of legs just running across your yard. Now, I think that we can smell emotions. So if you are with someone and they are either they, they do not mean well for you or they are planning on taking a swipe at your neck, you somehow smell that threat. And even though consciously your brain is going, they didn't say anything, they didn't do anything, their body language is okay, it seems all okay, the other part of your brain, the animal part of your brain, which is firing in fear response or threat response, is going, no, watch out! And that's what keeps you up at night, is your conscious brain wrestling with the unconscious part of your brain. I think that that's, when we talk about being psychic or having premonitions, I think that that's actually what's happening. We're, we're smelling or picking up on things that we don't even realize. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so that's equivalent to like your spider sense tingling, your sixth sense. So yeah, I definitely believe that for sure. Something is watching me. If you've had the feeling, you know what I'm talking about. I'm playing only up in my office. Something keeps passing by this window. I'm gonna, I just propped up the phone here and I'm gonna play. If you're walking by my office, I want you to knock it off. Holy. Is that you making all that noise back there? This thing's always closing doors. You need to get out. Dan. Will you knock it off, please? <laughs> you gotta get out. You're, you're gonna lock yourself in the laundry room again? You're not leaving? You're not gonna take the You know, there's just something strange about a man that can talk to a ghost like he's just a old friend that wore out his welcome or something like that. I mean, too, too many incidences like that, I'm out. Why is this monkey's face red? Is a question you've probably never asked yourself, but I'm gonna give you an answer. And yeah, this is real. This is a Uakari. It's a monkey found in the Amazon and nowhere else. It's one of the few primates with a receding hairline, and its lack of body fat makes it look like a communist Voldemort. But the reason this monkey is a red face? Spoiler alert, it has to do with getting laid. Whenever something doesn't make sense in nature, it's usually because you're not the one they're trying to turn on. I hope. So basically, the skin on their faces is really thin, and the red comes from the blood vessels directly under it. Also, their skin's transparent, so you can literally see the blood behind its face. But there's a catch. When a Yuakari monkey gets sick or severely injured, their faces literally get paler. Like for example, a monkey with a malaria parasite will turn almost white. So the redder in the face the monkey is, the healthier he looks and the more females he gets to poke. And healthy males get even redder when they're in the mood. Moral of this video, when it comes to the Uakari and some people, the color red only stops cars and crips the more you know. You gotta love it. The most humorous facts about animals that you'll find on the net. Help her feel a little better. Nope, she might be in the bath, so... <laughs> May have to cut this off early. Knock knock. Hey, how was the rest of your day? Hey, Ben. Oh. What? I, I thought... didn't know you were going to be here so soon. I was just running the tub. It's about to get in. Uh, All right. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, okay. Yeah, hey, I got you these. I know you're having a rough day, so... Aw, oh my god, these look so good. Uh... Oh? Did the water just turn off? 
I think it did. What the hell? Uh, babe? The water's all black. <laughs> what the fuck? What the hell? What is it? Oh, shit! Babe, run! Oh my god! Oh, oh what the? Hey! It's stuck! I can't open, open it! it. Oh my god! Yeah, that's creepy to the Tim Power, man. I don't, I don't know if anybody's gonna be, you know, taking a bath after seeing something like that. Ah, ah, thank you. Nada, aquí. Nada, nada, nada. Nada, control. Vamos. Now, did you see the, the the fangs come out? That's hey, that's wild. That's something to marinate on right there. This is the man that was sitting next to the woman on the plane, and I'm gonna show you guys the footage from the body cams of the police officers when they talked to him. Oh, yeah, she just pushing me like, are you at the part of the, uh, I don't know what she, who's talking to the, in the phone. Okay. So I was just sitting right here, and she just got me pushing me and then she just. Did she say anything before that to you? Uh-uh. No? No. Nah. You didn't say anything to her? No. Nah. Are you okay? You hurt? Yeah. No, no, I'm okay. You sure? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I held my flight, so it's just going to be like a minute, 20 minutes. Okay. So that assault mean what does that mean? Assault? Uh, it means to uh, attack, to fight somebody, to, you know, push them, or um, uh, to bring some kind of harm, bodily injury. Right, right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. No. No, you should just, just, just do it. You don't want to do anything about it? Hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Come on. Do you mind if I get your information real quick? Yeah. So that's the guy, huh? Well, I mean, he looks pretty normal to me. Join you in a conspiracy thing here, okay? State lotteries. Do you know what most of the revenue? You know, it's a state money. It right. goes into the coffers, right. tax coffers. Do you know where most of that money is allocated for in most states? No. It goes to education. Oh, that's good. You didn't know that? No, that's yeah, great. It's cool. it's, it's, so that makes you feel a little better like you're helping out your own state right. when you buy your state lottery. Here's the thing. Thank the conspiracy you. is they have to make sure that the school curriculum does not teach probability <laughs> statistics. What? <laughs> What? Because if they did- Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If they did, then no one would play the lottery. So they allocate money to education with a specific mandate no, that, that you can't- No, I'm not saying that, that. I'm not saying that. What are you saying? I'm, yes, I'm saying that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, I'm just but... saying it's a little suspicious. 
that, that they the don't teach those things. very knowledge of math that mm-hmm. would undermine the ability of the state lottery to make money is not a required part of the math curriculum in kindergarten through 12. Mm. I like Neil because he'll definitely give you something to think about. Advantage to using numerology in the lottery? The lottery is an operation by the CIA. What they do is they can't take money um, out of taxpayer dollars without leaving a paper trail. So what they do is they make sure their people win the lotto and they kick that money back to them. I don't believe, you know, people win 400, 500 million, maybe one or two guys, but I believe most of that money is like a psyop to get uh, the CIA. Holy shit! Because, dude, you know who got busted doing that? Yep, New Mexico. Mm-hmm. And I believe Oklahoma got busted giving Zorro Ranch giant lottery. Dude, that totally makes sense, man. That it's totally a makes oh, sense yeah. that these people win these lotteries. And you're like, oh, this guy just won the lottery. And half of them stay anonymous, too, so you can never prove that they yeah, were- Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That anonymous money goes straight back to the CIA and Langley. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. At the same time, people aren't going to stop playing. People are going to keep that hope and that, you know, that they're going to win one day. When did you sell your soul? He straight up called him out for selling his soul. This is wild. Before I show you this clip, let me give you a little bit of context. Israel Adensinia is one of the biggest fighters in the world, and he is often seen drawing a cross through the Monster logo. Maybe he just has beef with the company, or maybe it's because Monster is actually 666 in Hebrew. I'm sure we're all aware of the conspiracy, so I won't go into depth. Now check this clip out. What do is I don't use my platform to fucking sell out and make money. Nick Mana. Fucking grow a pair of fucking nuts and grow a fucking spine. You don't even represent your country when you sell out. When did you sign a Monster Energy? Tell me. Hey, you you know, signed your soul recently, you know, right? You did. I ride motorcycles. Isn't it funny, Isn't it funny like that every time I have to fight someone, Monster signs them immediately and becomes a fan of them? You know why? Because I didn't sell out and I didn't sell my soul. What do you have to do to that pig head of fuck? Huh? What do you have to do to sell your hey, soul to get that deal? At the day, you're still gonna have to look in the mirror and know that you're a little. Hey, bitch. you sold your soul for monster. You sold your soul to that monster. Hey, listen, you guys, I can look in the mirror and be happy. Give me a fucking dirt bike. I fucking love monster, bro. I'm in line with monster. I definitely have to dig into some of those conspiracies because uh, I've heard that a few different times about monster energy drink, but uh, I gotta dig into that for sure. Oh, that looks so cool. This pool right here. Whoa. That knee drops down like eight feet or something. You want to go down there and figure it out? <laughs> no. I'll put the GoPro down there. Oh, that's a good idea. That might look cool. Yeah. Alright, let's see what we can see down here. If that was a petrified giant, what part of the giant do you think they were traveling through? People who are born in dragon years, people who are born in monkey years, people who are born in rat years are going to come up. But the people who are born in dog years are going to take a f- out. That's just the way it is. When we talked about you, I said your enemy year is 217. How was your 217, my friend? Not so good. Not so good. That's because it was your enemy year. Well, if you're born 1970, 1982, 1994, 2006, next year is the year of the dragon. You're born in the year of the dog. 85% of you guys are uh, uh, Straight up, 85% of so you guys are f- I thought I said it. Lay low. Lay low. 
That's the only thing you can do. Listen, if you know the world's against you, you can't really do too much except. But Gary, what about people say, fuck the dog, I don't care about the dog, I want to go, yeah, I want to board out next year, I want to go then, hunt. Then the universe is going to make them hold their is it possible? To, is it possible to go against the energies? Yeah, you can f*** yourself if you do that. But can, can you win an enemy year? Very rare. But it's very, very, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's possible for maybe 5%. We're talking about percentage games here, bro. 95 <laughs> or f Five creepy videos. Until the next one, stay grim. <laughs> Every clip on that lineup look real. Marrakech, dans la nuit du vendredi 8 au samedi 9, Brocoli TV. Regardez dans le ciel. Expliquez-moi en commentaire, s'il vous plaît. Merci. Not many know that the Germans in World War II had taken part in evil occultist practices. This was introduced by one of the highest ranking members of the German party, Heinrich Himmler, which developed an interest with the occult during his childhood. He later brought celebrations like the Summer Solstice Festival, which were pagan inspired, paying homage to the sun as a symbol of Aryan strength and purity. Many believe that this and many similar practices infiltrated the Germans and provided them with their motives of racism and hate. Combined with the use of methamphetamine to fuel their army, the Germans were certainly servants of the devil. I did see some actual video of Hitler and he looked like he was on something. I, and now we know. Giant squid, just like this one, are starting to come to the ocean surface all over. Giant squid, just like this one, are starting to come to the ocean surface all over the world. It's got a lot of people curious. What is the motive of these squid? And is there something else at play? Now, Japan has gotten some video on this, but they're not the only ones. Engulfs the camera system. It is this alien creature that's got eight arms and two slashing tentacles writhing around in a parrot beak that rips flesh and an eye that's as big as your head. Now these squid usually don't go after people because traditionally they live a lot deeper in the ocean. The genus Magnopinna or the big fin squid are thought to be the deepest occurring squid genus with sightings as deep as 6,212 meters. This makes the big fin squid the only known squid to occupy the Hadal zone the deepest region of the ocean. Their arms and tentacles can be up to eight meters long and are usually held at disconcerting right angles. So my concern, I don't know if it's much of a concern as a thought, is that when animals start doing stuff against their natural instinct, like in this case, squid coming to the surface, maybe something's up because animals are far more in touch with nature than we are. Then again, who knows? I'm just a fat old bastard wearing cheese on my head. Shavenu Vushkis, 
Shavadu! With him being loud and acting like that, it's kind of hard to focus on the message of the clip, you know? <laughs> This 33 degree Freemason shared a lecture that will change your life. Manly P. Hall was an author, lecturer, and mystic. He presented a lecture in which he talks about the magnetic fields not only of man, but of the universe and the smallest atom. Every human body is surrounded by an etheric or energy field. This energy area forms an egg like atmospheric sheath around the physical body, usually extending one to three meters from it in each direction and this energy field is the basis of virtue. It responsible for the functionality and protective power to move the emotions, thoughts, and attitudes of the person. If you want to see the lecture, watch the full video on our YouTube channel. That's pretty deep, I might have to check that out. So the reason you practice meditation is so that when you're sitting with a friend and they're telling you about their good day or their bad day, you are focused on one thing and one thing only, what they're telling you, as opposed to waiting for your turn to speak. And you may have thoughts, and you say, that's a thought, I'm going to label that and deal with that later. And you remain so focused, and there's a bang in the background, but your eyes don't leave your friend, because you're so present. At the end of the conversation, they will say to you, thank you for listening. They will say, thank you for being present. They'll say, thank you, I feel heard. Congratulations, you were present. Congratulations, all that meditation was worth it now. The practice of meditation, though it has benefits to yourself, the reason to practice meditation is as a service to others. That's definitely another way to look at it. I like that perspective. Any video in this carnival of a world we live in is heavily coded. So let's just get straight into it. All right, so check this out. Drake's chain is literally the key to understanding what this entire music video is about because the chain is a message within itself. So if you look at the chain, it's a key joint with an owl. So let's go to the element encyclopedia of secret science and symbols and find the word key. The key or clavicle is symbolic of access to something that has been hitherto kept hidden or which is a secret. However, keys are used for locking as well as for unlocking, and deities that are depicted holding keys, for example, may symbolize the need to keep something private or occluded. A key need not to be a physical object, and the act of unlocking is not restricted to mundane artifacts. A code, for example, may hold the key to understanding a secret language or cipher. So the key is symbolic of having access to something that is hidden, or that which is secret. So what's the significance of the owl? The Italian word for owl, strix or strega, also means witch, and this provides a heavy hint about one's aspect of the bird's symbolic meaning. Because the owl is nocturnal, it means it has access to covert information, occult knowledge, and secrets. So not only does the key represent secrets, or that which is hidden, but the owl also represents occult knowledge, secrets, and covert information. Stuff that you're not supposed to know, unless you're initiated. The idea that the owl has access to information denied mere mortals is further underlined by the fact that the bird can swivel his head an astonishing 270 degrees. Quite literally, the bird can see behind itself. And in the book The Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall, it says the nocturnal birds were appropriate symbols for both sorcery and secret divine sciences. Sorcery because black magic cannot function in the light of truth, day, and is powerful only when surrounded by ignorance, night. And the divine sciences because those possessing the arcana are able to see through the darkness of ignorance and materiality. Owls and bats were consequently often associated with either witchcraft or wisdom. So Drake is covertly telling you, He's well acquainted with occult knowledge and has wisdom and understanding of how you truly become a celebrity, how you truly become a star, or in his case, a pop star, the best kind of celebrity. And who better to pick the star in a music video called Pop Star than an actual pop star? Now look at this. Notice how these two females are damn near always with him in this music video. Why is that? Pillars are sometimes used in pop culture for reasons other than decorative purposes to take on an esoteric meaning. The act standing between or going through pillars symbolically represent transformation or initiation and can be found in instances such as Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. 
The cover of the first book of the Harry Potter series, where he discovers he is a wizard, his initiation is visually portrayed as him going through two pillars. The original title of the book is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's Stone, an ancient alchemical concept representing illumination. The rapper Kanye West, standing in the middle of twin pillars in his highly symbolic video, Power. No one man should have all that power. So why do these two females always stand next to him? especially wearing the same color because they represent the pillars and him standing between the pillars represents initiation that's how you become famous you have to be initiated into Freemasonry first initiation too provides a key that unlocks secret knowledge or information the key is a symbol of power a visible sign of this initiation being given the keys to a town or city is a great honor with implications of power and ownership and has parallels with the medieval custom of handed over the keys as a way of granting power. So what are some of the things you have to do to be initiated? Now he broke that all the way down. There's no question about that. And I'm gonna have to check that book out because hey, I love to learn new things. What's the average lifespan of an NPC? I'm not sure never really thought about it but i guess we just keep living until the game is over that's deep um okay if you could change anything about your situation what would it be i wish i could have more control over my life and make my own choices <laughs> instead of just following the program path why can't you make more choices why can't you break the path this is how the game works i don't really have a say in the matter but sometimes I like to imagine what it would be like to break free from the constraints and forge my own path. I can help you. What do you need from me? I appreciate the offer. But there's not much you can do to change my situation. I just have to keep playing my part in this game. What happens when I shut the game off? Where do you go? I don't really know. To be honest, it's like everything just stops and I cease to exist until the game is turned back on again. I just got chills. Is that what death is like? Dude, I just got chills. I don't want to talk about death. It's too morbid. Let's focus on the present and enjoying our time in this beautiful city. Do you think the NPCs I hit with my car in GTA could feel it? Think of, what if all of them were, were... I don't think so. It's just a game after all. Please don't do that. It's not very nice. <laughs> But it's kind of fun. <laughs> it's not a very nice thing to say. NPCs have feelings too. You know. Dude, could you imagine a GTA or a Red Dead where you could talk to anyone like this? If you had one piece of advice for the people watching this video, what would it be? This is, this is unbelievable. Never stop exploring and trying new things. Even if it scares you. Life is too short to stay in your comfort zone. And smash that like button, right? Sure. I guess. I don't know if I want to have NPCs that can talk like that when I'm playing Grand Theft Auto or something like that. It might change the game a bit, you know? It, like, if you run over somebody in, in Grand Theft Auto, you might feel like you're actually committing murder or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you guys, hey, that's another one in the books. I appreciate you guys for the 30k and uh, let's take it even higher. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and join the iTrack fam. And I will definitely catch you guys on the next one.